If you like curry, I've got a really delicious recipe for you. It's a Thai red curry with beef. First thing we do is prepare the paste. So I'm using some Thai red curry paste. This goes into your blender. About two tablespoons is enough. Some garlic, and the garlic is just peeled. Take the skin of the garlic, peel it. They go in there whole. The blender's gonna do the work. And then a favorite of mine, ginger. Absolutely gorgeous. So we're gonna show you how to peel the ginger. Just using a small little vegetable knife. Cut the ginger and then just simply pare it. So just with the outside, you're removing the skin. And ginger, of course, is very good for you. Very good for your stomach and digestion and that. And it works really well with the curry. Now, if you have any extra ginger, a good tip is to peel it, wrap it in cling film and throw it into your freezer. And if you're doing a stir fry or something like that, you can just remove it from the freezer and use it as you want to. Just don't forget to remove the cling film. So we just simply cut it quite chunky. Now some coriander using the lovely stalks and all. Just rip this up and put that into your blender. So this is the first stage of making the recipe is to make the paste. I'm gonna put some coconut milk, roughly about four tablespoons go here. And then just place the lid on. It's gonna be a wee bit noisy. This is gonna do the work for you. Make sure it's well done. Smell of that with the garlic. So you're looking for a nice soft paste. There's loads of colour in that. Now, we're going to put this into our beef. So this is our quality assured beef that we're using. And we're using the chuck, known as the shoulder. It's a good value cut. We're going to put in two spoonfuls of this. So what the curry paste does, it actually tenderises, which means it penetrates, go right into the centre of the beef, gives it lots of flavour, and also it helps with the colour. And to marinate it, just leave it covered in cling film in your fridge. It's like any marinade, if you can leave it, you know, for two hours or preferably overnight, you get a completely different color and flavor. So the flavor will penetrate into the center of the actual beef. So give it a good mix until it's well combined. And then all you gotta do, cover it in cling film and place it in your fridge. Now here's one which I have made, left in your fridge. And look at the difference in the color, the lovely richness, the depth of color and that will have serious flavour. And I'll actually make the meat nice and soft and tender, you know, as it's cooking. It'll actually break down the texture of it. So what we're going to do is start to cook off the curry paste. Make sure the wok is nice and hot. This is very important when you're making any kind of curry or casserole to cook the beef in small batches. Don't, don't throw it all in. If you throw it all in at once, it just brings down the temperature and the beef will begin to stew, you know, and boil. You don't want that. You want a nice colour on the beef and you're sealing in the, juice, the juices. Now, there's no need for oil in your wok, because there's already oil in the paste, and of course you have the coconut milk, and like it has a high fat content. Sealing this off, that's what we're doing. We're just looking to cook out the outside of it very gently, because we are gonna cook this for an hour and a half in the oven. So this takes about four to five minutes. Just keep stirring it regularly. And the beauty about this casserole, or curry, is that you can have it cooked, and it's actually one of these dishes that tastes better. The flavors the next day, just warm it through. Now, I'm going to lift this out. Put this into our casserole dish. And then in goes some more paste. So every so often we're adding in some more paste. Two spoonfuls of that. So I'm using the beef, and it's the quality assured beef I'm using, but you could use pork, chicken. Of course, they'd cook a little bit quicker than beef and just sprinkle the beef all around the wok. Now it's very important when you're doing this that you cook it in batches, because you don't want the meat to boil. You want to get a nice little bit of colour, not too much. If you put it all in together, it's going to stew, and you're going to lose a lot of moisture from the actual beef. And just keep scraping the base of the wok, because this will stick. This is a non-stick wok. So make sure to keep the wok in a full heat, so that it seals it in. So when all the meat is sealed off, then we have to do the next stage of this which is added in the liquid. So we have some chicken stock. And some coconut milk. The rest of the can of the coconut milk. Now make sure you scrape down all the paste, which is just left around the wok. Lots of flavor there. And we're gonna bring this back to the boil. And when it comes back to the boil, just very careful, take your time when you're doing this, pour it all over your meat. So we've sealed off the beef, added in our chicken stock, Give it a good stir to combine it all. 
place the lid on the beef curry and then just open your oven. It's a heavy dish. We're going to bake this off at 150 degrees. And that'll take about an hour to an hour and a half until the meat is really tender but still holding its shape. So after an hour and a half, this is what it looks like. Oh, the smell of that is fantastic. Now, we're going to finish it. Squeeze the lime and it'll give a lovely refreshing taste to it. And some nam pla, which is a fish sauce. And this is what they use in Thai cooking instead of salt. So, good way to sprinkle that. Give it a good stir. What's beautiful about this, the meat is tender, but it's held its shape. That's exactly what I want. Now, this Thai curry is a modern variation of a beef casserole, done in the same way, but the addition, of course, of Thai curry paste and coconut milk, but the whole process, browning off the meat and that and cooking it in different stages. So we're gonna serve it up with some rice, which we've just steamed off. So spoon in the rice, this will mop up all the lovely juices from the curry. And using a ladle, you don't want to waste all those fantastic juices and the sauce and all. Just arrange your meat, pile it nice and high. And plenty of juice there. And then just to finish it, just for presentation, we're going to use some fresh coriander. And you have to be careful with this because it gets very soft. It doesn't really like the heat of the kitchen very much. So just finish a couple of little sprigs, and some spring onions on top. And there you have it. A delicious Thai red curry with our beautiful Irish beef. So if you're making a Thai red, green or yellow curry, the principle is exactly the same. You just use a different paste and they're all widely available. Check out the full recipe on boardbia.ie. To make this Thai green chicken curry, replace the red curry paste with green, add some marinated chicken breast strips to the curry paste and cook for four minutes. Then tip in some mange too and cook for a further four minutes until the chicken is tender. Serve with steamed rice and scatter with fresh coriander leaves. Did you know members of the Board Bia Quality Assurance Scheme are regularly audited by Board Bia?